Hi there folks, welcome to Dunsey's Guitar World. Welcome to another exciting feature on a guitar. Today, as you've seen in the intro, it's a black and white number. Possibly associated with people like Rick Nielsen from Cheap Tricks, so the music in this video may well be kinda cheap trick-ish. So this guitar was made in 1981 in the United States of America and it is a Hamer. H-A-M-E-R, not Hammer. A Hamer. So, the Hamer history. Now, the entire Hamer history is contained in this book here. The ultimate. It's not just a book about Hamers, it's the ultimate book about Hamers. So I'm not going to get into the full details of the Hamer company, but they started in about 1973, 72, 73, built their first guitar. First bass, I believe, was the very first one. And then they started making a model which became known as the Standard. Now it wasn't a Les Paul standard, it was very much based on an Explorer. Rick Nielsen has been seen playing dozens of these over the years and I believe he owns serial number 0000, all the zeros, which I think was originally Paul's guitar, according to what I've read on the internet. So Rick Nielsen owns Hamer serial number, all the zeros. So this was made in 1981, it's known as the Graphic Special because of the graphic on it. Now I have found a few of these and they all seem to be 1981. 1981 was the year the graphic specials were made. Prior to the graphic specials, specials, prior to the graphic specials was the, the Hamer Sunburst which was more like a double cut Les Paul but it had binding and although it was called Sunburst they weren't all Sunburst but very very nice guitars. Now these guitars are generally quite expensive guitars so these would normally be out of my price range. But as we're about to see, this guitar arrived to me with, I don't know if damage is the right word, but it certainly arrived with some customization from a previous owner. So let's have a look at the guitar. But there are some dings around the body. I mean, this is, this is an old guitar. What is it, 40, 42 years old or something like that? So let's look at the top. Now look at the top here. Now that plug, as it's known in the trade, was put in by my good friend Mike. Uh, let's look at how this guitar arrived before we got the plug. So this is a picture from when I bought the guitar. So you can see there's like a black plate underneath the bridge. It looks like a bit of pickguard material, and indeed it was a bit of pickguard material. So obviously I knew there was something going on here. Now my instincts were telling me this had had a Kaler fitted. So let's have a look to see what was underneath when I got the guitar. Oh dearie me, as we say in Scotland. So this is what was underneath the plate that was underneath the bridge. It is in fact a hole which looks like it was home done. It doesn't look like it was done in the factory. I mean these weren't fitted with Kalers in 1981, that's for sure. So yes, it looks like a home route for a Kaler. Now to be honest, if I had done this at home, it would probably be worse than this, but you know, it is what it is, as they say. So there's a bit of wood you can see right in the middle of that hole there. Now that wasn't glued down, the only reason that was there was so the middle screw of the bridge had something to go into. Um, it was just, you know, when I turned the guitar upside down that fell out of the pocket, so suffice to say it wasn't the most stable thing, and surprisingly it did sound good, I mean these are vintage DiMarzio PAFs. I'm not entirely sure if this shipped with two double creams, I don't know. They look to be the same vintage, but I can't tell, maybe one was changed. Uh, when I went into the control cavity, the middle, this control has been changed at some point, so maybe, um, maybe this pickup has been changed, I'm not entirely sure. But it is a great sounding guitar. Um, I did some leads here, I mean, my apologies for my amateurish here, but I did some leads on the bridge, middle and neck settings.
yeah, it sounds pretty good. It sounds pretty good. Very comfortable to play. Let's have a quick look at the specs and measurements of this 1981 Hamer Graphic Special. So comfortable. Now I had read reviews that said the neck profile was very big and like a 59 Les Paul, maybe like an early 59 Les Paul. But th this isn't. This is more wide than kind of deep, but comfortable. Very, very comfortable to play. I have to say, uh, I've used this at gigs and rehearsals, and uh, well, since I had uh, since Mike managed to fix this. Now the one thing I do have to do here is I need to get this um, maple plug properly finished. Now the bridge that came with these was known as a Hamer Sustain Block Bridge and it is a beefy bridge. The profile of that bridge, it is a beefy bridge. And when this arrived, it did not have the big beefy bridge on it. It was like some some sort of thin thing. I mean, it worked fine. So what I did was I went online and tried to buy an original one. Now they are expensive. But I found a company called John Mann, who based in the US, I can't remember where, Pennsylvania or something like that. But he makes 100% correct vintage style bridges. Now, I think he only does two runs a year, so you have to wait, I had to wait six months to get this. And I mean, it wasn't cheap, but it is absolutely perfect. Um, just like the original. Um, on a Hamer sort of fan group, and people have spoken very highly about these. I mean, it's a big chunk of metal. Uh, Mike fitted this for me as well. Mike set this whole guitar up, so a uh, huge thank you to Mike and his band, The Dead Seasons. I'll put a link down below to The Dead Seasons. So yes, it's all set up, sounding and playing fantastic. The rosewood on the fingerboard, very nice grain on it. So one of my favourite things about it is how it has a checkerboard at the top. Now the serial number, uh, on my camera here, it looks like it's out of focus. It's not my camera that's out of focus, it's the actual serial number. Um, like a lot of these serial numbers from 1981 is uh, it's like it's being sort of smudged a bit so uh, so that's the serial number, that's not my camera that's done that now I was interested in how many of these were made because they only seem to be like 1981 they're in the Hamer book actually there is one of them in the advert from 1981 and there's a picture as well, I'll show that here so I had to actually photograph that from the book so it's maybe not, not very good quality so yes, yeah, 1981, now the person who painted these, designed and painted them is actually a member of the Hamer fan group on uh, on Facebook, couldn't believe it I posted a photograph of this and she said, oh I designed that back in 1981 crazy, crazy, it's a small world folks, it's a small world so she has posted some photographs of the guitars which she designed and they're all 1981, now, I didn't want to just steal photographs from a Facebook group that I joined. So I have found a few other ones from from that year. So let's have a quick look at them. So I like that one, kind of half and half. Um, horizontal or vertical lines, depending on which way you're holding the guitar. On that side and that side. Uh, next one. I do like that, more kind of black and white uh, blocks. Now that's cool, that's cool. Now that does have the uh, double cream in the bridge and the zebra in the neck. That's cool as well. All these guitars are cool. I mean, I'm not seeing one that I didn't like the design on. Now that, that's pretty cool. Black and white, just black and white stripes going to the neck. That one's more intricate. Again, I like it. I like it. I wish I had all these. I wish I owned all these guitars. Now there's one with uh, two double creams. I don't know if that's how it shipped from the factory. I don't know. But I like that as well. Now, I did take one picture from the Facebook group. So if you're a member of that group and you saw this, I, I didn't want to just steal all your photographs. But a person has put together all the Hamer graphic specials which have been identified and they have found 33 of them. Let's have a quick look at that. So there you have it, all of the Hamer graphic specials from 1981 which have been photographed in the wild. Every one of them looks fantastic, like I say, these are, these are cool guitars and the fact that they're one-off designs just makes it even better, you know. I'm not a guitar collector, I'm a guitar player. I mean, I do have a lot of guitars. But be under no illusion, I do sell a lot of guitars, you know, to finance guitars that I buy. I have to sell guitars which I already have. So there you go, 33 Hamer graphic specials. That's it. My 1981 Hamer. Beautiful guitar. Ding! 
beautiful guitar. I love it. So the only thing, like I said earlier, the only thing I have to do is just kind of get this refinished. I mean, it looks okay from a distance, but um, I need to need to speak to someone about getting this um, finished properly. I'm not going to fix any of the stuff on the back. That's good, honest play wear. Buckle belt. I think somebody had a bullet belt back in the 80s. But um, yeah, I love it. And I was really pleased that I got it for a decent price because th these, are, these are expensive guitars, um, usually. But the fact this had had so much, air quotes, customization done meant it was uh, it was within my price range and, I, and i'm glad i got it uh, and super thanks to my mate mike for for fixing this because that this is neat and that was not an easy job to do so the intro tune was very much cheap trick influenced and it may well be that the end tune is also very much cheap trick influenced in the same style indeed it may be just a longer version of that original song with, uh, with some more guitar. But it's about showing you what the guitar sounds like, I guess, in the videos. Showing you what the guitar looks like and the specs and stuff like that. As ever, folks, it's a privilege and a pleasure bringing you content on Dunsey's Guitar World. Cheers for now.